Toronto. I know you made reference to that earlier. I was on like every Wednesday with him in the fall, and we we would we called it a fantasy section, but all we did was act like idiots. Um, <laughs> but no, we uh, boy, there are a couple times where I'll tell you what, Andy. Uh, I thought, okay, during this commercial break, well, we may take a swing at each other, but <laughs> I, I, we're brothers. You know, you, right. you don't punch your brother, and and. Greg's my brother, and I, I always joke, although Greg and I are so different in so many ways, I think we're both more alike than either of us would ever want to admit. And, and I think because of that, the, the, the dynamic between us was, was I, I think, pretty cool personally. Shawnee B., i got to do a weather for everybody. Can you hold on just a second? Yeah, no we'll problem. We'll be right back with Sean Belisian in just a second on AM and FM WCSR. 52 degrees at 7.30. The forecast for tonight, we are under a flood watch in effect until 1 a.m. Eastern Time Thursday with a high wind warning in effect from 7 p.m. this evening until 5 o'clock a.m. Thursday. Tonight, showers and thunderstorms in the evening. Snow and rain likely after midnight with some thunderstorms possibly producing heavy rainfall. Uh, Don't expect a lot of snow accumulation, but it is going to get awfully windy. Uh, We could see gusting wind tonight up to 60 miles per hour. For Thursday, cloudy with a 30% chance of snow showers and windy with highs in the upper 30s. Friday, sunshine highs in the mid-30s. And Saturday, cloudy with a 50% chance of snow showers, highs in the lower 30s. Right now, 52 degrees at AM and FM WCSR. We're talking with Sean Belisian. Uh, formerly of Sports Radio 1130 WDFN, the fan. Uh, Shawnee B., talk about Mita. Uh, I never actually made it to a Mita in person, which is one of my true regrets in life. Would you tell our <laughs> listeners about Mita? Um, boy, I guess I'll start at the beginning. Um, I don't know if you recall, about six, yeah, about six years ago, yeah, 2003 was our first one, uh, PETA, the People for the Ethical Treatment of Animals, came out with some very, uh, very... Uh, controversial ads and whatnot. And, you know, I, I'm all for, you know, not beating up animals and not being inhumane to them. But, you know, don't, don't tell me I can't eat my meat. You know, I mean, that, that's why I draw the line. And don't, don't draw references between Jesus Christ and, and, and a pig. You know what I mean? Right. He died for exactly. your sins, I think, was the one. Was the, was the one ad that drove me nuts, and it was a picture of a pig, like, on a cross or something. Mm. I, I forget what it was. And I, I said, you know what, I... Let's have a giant barbecue, and we'll just call it Mita. You know, men eating all the animals. And um, (laughs) that was one of those ideas, Andy, where, honest to God, if 50 people would have showed up the first year, I would have considered it a victory. And to have, like, 500 people show up that year, I I mean, I I remember just looking at the parking lot going, are you kidding me? Um, and, And it was so big that we decided to move it the next year, and then we outgrew that place quickly, and we... Finally, moved to Compuware Arena, where the Plymouth Whalers of the Ontario Hockey League play, and um, I, I mean it is built to, a, to just a crescendo every year. I mean the numbers keep getting bigger and bigger, and basically, what it is is a, it's a giant barbecue that doesn't cost you a darn thing. All we ask <laughs> right. is bring some meat. You could bring a hot dog, and trust me, some freeloaders did. <laughs> um, or you could bring as much meat as you wanted, and and, and it's communal living, and we all share and. All that stuff, and the good part about it is, I, I I always ask people if you can bring some canned goods so we could, um, you know, uh, donate the canned goods to, uh, you know, one of the local food banks, and we did it for the Oakland County Food Bank, um, and that would be pretty cool. And everybody always came through there, so um, yeah, that was boy, that was a blast. That that was really really a blast. And uh, certainly, if I'm not back on radio uh, by the time summertime hits around, uh, yeah, I, I'll miss that for sure. <laughs> My wife and I were bumping around. I don't remember what we were doing, and we we heard you talking about it, and it was coming on that afternoon, and we literally almost drove up. I mean, that's a two and a half hour drive for us. We thought about going up, and now, of course, I wish that I would have. I kind of took for granted there'd be more meters down the line, and hopefully there will be. But that was always fun. And the other thing you did that got a lot of national attention. Uh, and folks listening may remember the Millen Man March, uh, oh. the the Angry Fan uh, the March and that kind of thing. My wife and I actually won tickets on the Stoney and Wojo show to that game against the Bengals, and we were there that day, and, and I saw the guys marching by and that kind of thing. Uh, how did the idea for the Millen Man March come together? It, number one, that was the most... Um... That was the most stressful week of my life. Oh, really? <laughs> Leading up to that. I, I'm not joking. Uh-huh. That was just... Uh, for a myriad of reasons that I that I won't get into here. Um, I, I just got sick and tired of it. You know, I, I had 
I had done the post game show for five years up until that point, and every Sunday talking about the exact same thing mm-hmm. during the Millen regime. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, uh, I always used to joke that one day I was going to mail it in and just play it like a post game show from 2001 and <laughs> call it a day. Yeah. You know, just grab one of the tapes and just because the only thing you had to change was the names and. Um, so I, I just thought, you know what, uh, and I think a lot of times we in radio have a better gauge of what's going on in the community than certainly uh, maybe some writers or television people do, and certainly more than the franchises do. And that was, as I said back then, that was a warning to the Ford uh, franchise. You better, you better, you know, do something about this Millen because it, it, apathy is here, and you don't even know it. And I, I don't think they really, ha-ha, giggle, giggle, you know, they laughed at it. They never took serious note. And then I think you could see with the slew of non-sellouts this past year, I think you could see that, that, that you know, we, we kind of knew it was coming. And, you know, they, they decided not to change their ways until it was too late. But, uh, yeah, that was, you know, again, one of those things to, I know one of the police officers when we started at the particular bar that we started at downtown, I know one of the police officers estimated that it was over 1,000 people. Again, that was one of those things. If 500 people showed up, I would have been happy as a pig in slot. You mm-hmm. know? And a lot of people showed up, and uh, you guys definitely got some attention for everything that you did that day. I, I thought that the cool thing about DFN, and we're going to close this part of the talk, and I want to talk some current sports with you if that's okay. Yeah. Uh, but the cool thing about you guys was, unlike a Jim Rome, let's say, who I love listening to Romy, but the difference was you and Stoney and, and Wojo – you guys didn't talk down to us. You guys acted like you were just fans like us who were passionate about the teams. I never felt like you were actually wishing any will against anybody in particular. You just wanted the teams to do well. Uh, was that kind of your philosophy as a talk show host to just try to be a fan and give some perspective? I just, You know what? I always promised myself, Andy, I was going to be me, period, end of story. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I'm not a journalist. I don't have a journalistic background. Um, you know, I've been blessed to have a couple people uh, approach me about doing writing for them. And, you know, I wrote for the Detroit News for a few years, and I uh, write for M Live as well. And, and I, that would be the first thing that I said to them. I'm not the journalist. Now, I take objectivity very seriously. Mm-hmm. Um, you, you, know, um, you know, I don't think it's exactly a secret. No offense to you or perhaps any of your listeners. I don't think it's exactly a secret. I'm a Michigan State fan. So <laughs> right. you, know, you know what my fans and my thoughts about Michigan are. But you know what? You didn't catch that on the radio. That was one thing I, I took being objective uh, very seriously. But, um, you, you know, in terms of being um, I'm not a fan, no, that's why I got in this business. And no disrespect to people in this business that feel that way. I know that's, you know, the, the creed that a lot of uh, writers live by. Oh, I stopped being a fan while, when I, once I got in the business. Well, what prompted you to get in the business? Being a fan. Right. Does that mean when, when you're done writing, does that mean you're going to go back to being a fan? I I never understood that. So, and again, no disrespect to anybody. That's just my mentality on it. Um, and so, yeah, you know what? I just wanted to be me. And, you know, I wanted to be a fan. You know, I wanted to, I guess, the radio show to be the place where, you know, almost like the corner bar. You go to the corner bar and it's the same guys talking about the same stupid stuff. And, you know, that that's kind of who and what I am. And hopefully we accomplish that. When your show started, was it is what was it? It is what it is. Did you have the Sean Belizean show at the very beginning? And how did you come up with the name? I never wanted to use my name in a show, and I uh-huh. never will use my name okay. in a show. I mean, unless unless um, you know, unless management you know absolutely said no, we're going to call this the Sean Belizean show. Well, then I I have no choice in the matter at right. that point in time. But no, it, it it was named. It is what it is. Uh, James Stewart of the Detroit Lions. <laughs> Uh, right. Formerly of the Detroit Lions, right. of course. After a Lions game was so flustered against the Jets in 2002, he was trying to explain, you know, what went wrong that particular day, and he just kind of shrugged his shoulders and said, "It is what it is." So we, uh, we, I, I said, "That is, that's the name of the show." So we actually had James on, like the right around the time of the one year anniversary of the show, and. It was kind of funny. He came out and he goes, you're such a moron. And I said, I know, but i got to thank you for the, you know, the name of the show and all that stuff. So uh, that's how it came about. Yeah, from day one it was called uh, It Is What It Is. You referenced 3G a little while ago. He was the program director, and he had the uh, Brady, Greg and Brady show on at WDFN. Uh, he, he seemed like a pretty intense guy. Was he a tough boss to work for? No, Greg, Greg was all right. You know, I, I, don't, I didn't have any issues with Greg uh, Greg, you know, hired me at WDFN, mm-hmm. so I'll, I'll always, you know, be grateful 
I'll always be grateful for that. I mean, Greg was 